We are live, coming here with a brand new Stir the Pod podcast show. I'm your host, Trevor, and tonight we are joined by Alex. Alex, how are you doing tonight? Yo, yo, yo. And that is the crew, you know, the STP board, back at it again. What else is new? Your original hosts are back at it for tonight's special edition, Legends Tour, Tony Reigns. I don't think I've been this hyped for a podcast in a long time. Definitely most hyped podcast of 2024. Absolutely. I'm most, excited. most hyped legends tour of all time. <laughs> I think I think this one is a long time coming. We've uh, we've talked about Tony, we've joked about Tony for years. We've um, I'm thinking back to our early early BMFE pods and we were doing seasons where tony was still on the show and like still one of the best characters and we'll get into all of those seasons but like we were talking about him as he was like coming onto our screens and like you know coming on every season and batting 300 and hitting 50 home runs and now like several seasons have gone by without him and we've like in those seasons been begging for him to come back and you know we we got the all-stars thing last uh, week and we'll get into that later about him actually coming back to the spinoff um but we've been we've been begging for this guy forever and so i think that's that's why like you said this is uh, a podcast that we're doing that we've been wanting to do for a while now absolutely before we dive into the career of tony reigns i think we got to start with last week's episode legends tour nisa i think I think that podcast, and I'll say this on record, is a Mount Rushmore podcast of SDP wow. slash BMFEP. I think Adam absolutely crushed it. I think his beginning, the fact that he spoke about Anissa for what was it, an hour and 15 minutes or whatever it was, the fact that we literally got banned from YouTube and copyrighted so you can't even see the video i think you can still see it through twitter but not on youtube insane never happened i mean adam just smashing the berries i have to give him one clap for that so he, yeah i mean he he took his his punishment on the chin and he gave us an awesome episode um i've like gone and re-listened to it a couple times it's hilarious um and that's it's kind of like, I mean, you did it, you did it last season and this season for the solo pods. It's almost like, uh, it's almost like watching someone do stand up because it's just, it's just one person. It's brutal. And, and until you're actually in the situation doing it, you don't realize like, especially there's moments where the, I know it was very chat heavy with a couple of us, but like when I did it, like obviously Alex and Andy weren't on. So I'm like, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing, and I felt like I was very Hank esque, uh, given stand up at times. So yeah, good good for Adam. And then um, I think we should probably point out too that Adam did Anissa uh, last week for part one of the reunion. We're yep. recording this now as part two of the reunion is literally on, and I don't think any of us really care about the reunion. Is anybody? Uh, in, first off, sorry to interrupt. Chat. Is anybody even watching this? Like. The fact that it's two parts is a fucking joke. I'll say that. It's stupid. And the fact that they're each... I thought they would at least shorten one of them to an hour. But no, we need three fucking hours of Jay yelling at Corey, yelling at Maurice. But um, Jay looks but, like a character from Real Bros. Simi Valley. Like, he really, he's, really tall with the button up. Up. he's got like the hat on backwards. Like, But, but, but I, I bring that up as to say that we aren't moving fully past uh season 39 just yet because we are gonna come back um sometime within the next you know two three weeks for the season recap award show we want to make sure we have time for for everybody to be able to join us and we just want to like close out this you know the reunion and everything and in the meantime we figured we'd come on here um and do like a fun legends tour uh, of tony but that that um the podcast to kind of put a bow on season 39 is still to come. So I don't think we're skipping that or anything. Yeah. And just a little housekeeping tip as well. Um, 
we don't know exactly when that date's going to be yet. A lot of us are traveling, NCAA tournaments starting. We're busy people. Um, it might not be on a Wednesday, but we will knock it out. And there are rumors swirling that it even might be an in-person podcast. So, Just, we'll yeah, it. stay stay tuned to the Twitter. Yeah, cool. All right, let's this do is it. Why you guys came? It's Tony time. Everybody, strap in, buckle up. Tony fucking reigns. Let's start at the beginning with Tony. Real world skeletons. Alex, I know this was one of the real world seasons. I know we were a little later in the game with watching real world live. What do you remember the most about real world skeletons? I mean, honestly, about the whole season, I I, I do remember Tony the most. I think, so I, at this time, like when real world skeletons came out, I had been watching the challenge live for a few seasons. I never really got into the real world until the, um, so after I think Portland was when they started introducing formats. So I think the next one was X's explosion. That was, that had like Corey and Jenna and yep. Jay and all of them. And so I watched that one live and like, I actually really enjoyed it. And then the next one was skeletons where they were trying to, you know, keep thinking of formats. And I remember watching that one and, and enjoying it. Um, I don't think it was as good as explosions, but I think one of the highlights was, was Tony. And I mean, we got, um, we got like Sylvia and I guess Bruno did that one season. So like we got a couple other people, but I think Tony really was the MVP of that season. Just like hooking up with Madison from day one. And then he had two, maybe three girlfriends, maybe two uh, girlfriends come in as, as skeletons and so I think at one point in the house, it was him, Madison, and two of his ex-girlfriends. And like, that's kind of perfect because that's how his challenge career and his challenge character became as well. So I just, I think back to Skeletons and honestly, the first thing that comes to mind is Tony. Yeah. One thing I want to bring up about Skeletons too, set in stone in Chicago. Correct me if I'm wrong. You've been to the house, right? I, I, I did walk by. I did walk by to the house that Tony Raines built. It has, I mean, this was years ago, but it's like, it's completely like not a thing now. Like, I don't know. I think they tore it down, which I feel like they, they kind had of, do. To. they had to after Tony's been through it. Like <laughs> you just have to like light the whole thing on fire. Yeah. You, you get one of those flashlights and you see all the stuff on the bed. <laughs> Jesus. God. But, uh, but yeah, looking back at that season, like, I'm looking at some of the cast members from that. I mean, you had Bruno. Like, who was Jason Hill? I don't even remember that person. Madison, Nicole was on that season. Sylvia was on that season. Like, there's some recognizable names, kind of like the the later of the challenge career people, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but, yeah, you kind of hinted at it earlier, the whole Madison and Tony relationship. Uh, hell, I mean, they even had a kid together. So uh, just something kind of crazy and kind of the first taste that we got of Tony. So, yeah, yeah, it, it was fun. And I, I, I will suggest that honestly for any of our listeners, like it is kind of a fun rewatch to just go rewatch that season, at least a few episodes of it um, and kind of see a very young Tony. And like you said, young other challengers. I think a fun thing about that season too, is that it was right after explosion. So like, the real world had never changed like formats until then. So all the cast members are kind of on like their toes the whole time. They're like, yeah. what's the twist going to be? What's, you know, who's my skeleton going to be and all of that. So it's definitely a fun season to go revisit. Yeah. On Paramount plus right now, go watch. Yes. But, but Trev, Trev. So I think I, I do want to ask you real quick before we get into his challenge seasons. So I think we're going to do kind of a, a one by one here. Um, before we get into that, let me just ask you, straight up point blank like when you think of tony reigns on the challenge like what what do you what comes to mind like how would you describe him to someone who like doesn't know the challenge or tony or anything like that his whole career when when i think of tony reigns and i think of the first moment and this is going to be like trevor you are a weirdo first thing i think of is his eating challenge with the mayo okay like for me that just sticks out I don't know why 
that is the moment where I'm just like, this guy's built different. And and I don't know, I forget what season that happened. Um, Might have been, I don't think it was Bloodlines. I think it was the season after. Vendettas. Vendettas. Um, Pretty sure. I think every single podcast that we've done talking about eating, we've brought up Tony eating mayo or eating something at some point. Yeah. And I think that just, when, when we have a challenge competitor and you, you know, we talk about the banana backpack, like we talk about somebody dominating elimination. We say, Oh, it's very CT caring bananas esque thing. When we talk about an eating challenge and someone who killed it, Tony is that example. Tony is that Mount Rushmore of eating performances. And for me, it's just like, but if you were to ask me how to describe Tony Reigns, I think he is just, you take away the football aspect, he's Johnny Manziel. Okay. That, that's the vibe I get from him. Okay, fair enough. Um, so for you, the same thing, same thing. What, what do you, what's your whole... Yeah, I think I think when I just think of Tony, the first thing that I like the way I would describe him is like he was for a four or five year period just an excellent addition to the challenge. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is like he was just a well rounded, like crazy, entertaining. He fights with people, he hooks up with people, he's good in confessionals, he's good looking, he's good at the challenge, like He's a well-rounded competitor and you know, that just like, you don't get that a lot these days. And like, I think, I think to, you know, this past season we did where literally 90 plus percent of the people that were on the show, we like legitimately don't want to see again. And like, you know, you go back to kind of the era before this where Tony was one of the guys they brought on. And like, when I think of him, my mind goes to, you know, the Corey's Ashley's hunters of the world, like people who kind of started their challenge careers at the same time as Tony. And like Tony is one of the ones that like sticks out above all of them. Cause he was so pops off the screen, entertaining to watch. And I think my football comparison was just from a, a competitor standpoint was kind of like, it's a little too strong, but almost like Barry Sanders because like he, he, he left the show. I feel like, when he started to become a good challenger, like he right. got stronger, he got in better shape. He won the screw up. Yeah. He grew up. And so I think there is always going to be that. What if, like, what if Tony would have just like been on the last six seasons that we recap, we would yeah. have loved to see it. Um, but I think just my, my overall impression of him is that like, he's just a great fucking challenge character to have on. And I think like, I mean, to just add on there, it's like, if you, we could mold, a competitor it's like some form of tony that we would want every season from a bunch of these people where they're a little crazy they can get drunk so <laughs> like drunk and like smash eggs on people you got pasta i mean there's a million different stories we can go but then at the end of the day they they back it up and they're a good challenge competitor like they're not yeah. just a layup or anything so and i think like you were hinting at like we didn't get to that peak, I would say that we all wish we would have saw. I think he kind of grew up, as we all say. But like, I don't know. I, I love Tony. I, I don't know how you can hate Tony. Um, and yeah. and I, I also like maybe we should we should save this for the end. But like, I I don't think it's a done deal that he's not going to do the show again. Like he's yeah. on he's on All Stars Force. So like I don't want us talking about him. Like he or our fans thinking that like we think he's never going to come back. Like he's still going to come back most likely at some point. Um, and like, that's what we're going to hope for. Yeah. I, I think it's, well, let, let's just say that towards the end. Let's okay. Just say that the end. All right. So diving right in his first season, bloodlines, which he came in with a bang, he comes in to the house. Who's his bloodline, his brother, Shane, who is arguably more insane than he is. And these guys are just getting drunk every night. Like this is like the puppy era of Tony. Like mm-hmm. has no idea what he's doing. He's pissing all over the carpet, like a dog untrained, very Fenway esque. Like this is like one of the best eras of Tony. I think it's just off the rails. He's with his brother. I mean, 
correct me if I'm wrong, did his brother like he was the one medically no, he was the one medically disqualified, right? Tony was. was his, yes, yeah, his appendix or something like that, right? Yes. His yeah. yeah. So but remember the fights him and his brother got on that season? Like they were like breaking glass and like screaming at each other. Like the brothers. The fight the fight was insane. He literally had Shane thrown up against the wall. Shane, like, you know, he's grown up with this, obviously. So he was like, I know what Tony's going to do. I know what he's not going to do. He's kind of laughing in his face, which just made a drunk Tony even more pissed off. But I have the – um, I'm kind of looking at the stats here, and it looks like Tony ended up getting DQ'd in episode four. So if you just think about that, he was only there for four episodes. He, on episode one, I think cheated on his girlfriend – with Christina, the hippie chick, fought his own brother and teammate, and then got DQ'd because something inside of him had just fucking busted and <laughs> his skin was yellow and green. So, like, to accomplish those three things in a four episode span, 60 minute episodes is fucking uh, amazing. Yeah. By chance, do you have the episode title of that season? Uh, episode three. It says three dash four is called Meet Me Halfway. Is when he was DQ'd? Yes. Oh, I have something else, but yeah. Why? What was it called? No, nah, don't worry about it. We'll, 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 what was episode episode three? Is what you just called it? I. It says three slash four is called Meet Me Half. Oh, sorry. No, that's the name of the challenge. I don't have the name of the episode. Okay. What? What is when it you called? Have time. No, no. You, well, We'll, we'll leave it at that. So I think one big thing that we can talk about too during the season was his fight with Camilla. Um, I, I forget what was the exact line. He called out his sister, um, Camilla's sister, mm -hmm. said like, well, I'm trying to think, God damn it. Didn't he, wasn't he basically saying that they were just a bad team? I don't know if he said that. I thought it was more like, Actually, I think you're right. I think he said, she, not Camilla, but her, like, is not a good competitor and yeah. doesn't want her on his team or, or so, to run a final or, or something like that. Right. That's definitely what it was. And then Camilla gets all in his face. They're screaming at each other, which leads into his second season, Rivals 3, which I know you guys all know Rivals 3 for us is one of our favorite seasons. Uh, this team. Just on paper, what what do we think about that team? Tony and Camilla. I mean, this is just let's light a firecracker and see what happens. It's it's like a match made in hell. Oh come on! I I I I mean, they were great together. They were terrible together. Um, but I I think it's it's funny that we talk about uh, like for example on some of the X's seasons where TJ's like Nani, you have a lot of people to choose from. And I think he did the same thing kind of to Tony because I think he had fought with maybe Nani's cousin, Nicole yeah. on bloodlines too. So it was like, Tony, you have a lot of people you pissed off. And it's like, uh, to camera, it's to like person. Nicole and Camilla and maybe Kellyanne too or something. And yeah. then they ultimately pick Camilla. And this was a team that like, you knew, I feel like there are challenge pairs where you're like, you say to yourself like this team could win it all if they like keep everything under control and like they might, you know, get into a fight, but like they got to, you know, hold steady and like fight through it. But like they have the potential to win it all. I feel like with this team, you said they have the potential to win it all, but there isn't an if and like, can they control themselves? They, they won't like, they will explode at some point And they did uh, several times. Um, and it was one of the more fun. I mean, we talked about them on our, Rivals 3 deep dive, um, they were one of the more entertaining teams the whole season. Well, they were also one of the true rival teams. Yeah. Like they, they I mean, I remember, like, the first confessional, Camilla started crying that she was partners with Toei, and she's, I think she was literally saying, like, just, like, fuck, and she's just, like, sobbing or whatever, and just, like, and that's what I, I want from the show. I want, like, true rivals, people that hate each other, and then, you know, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Alex, they had their moments when they were really good together. And then I think the moment that kind of switched everything 
was when Camilla lied or whatever. Like she picked up someone else's puzzle piece during that daily. I think it was Christina. She picked yes. up Christina's puzzle piece or whatever. And Christina was like flipping out and they finished last. And then they checked the, they went to VAR and um, saw that Camilla picked up the wrong piece. And then they just started kind of like internally going at it and eventually. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I mean, that's what I think was their final straw because I remember in rivals three, um, can you see, I want to see how many episodes they lasted before they got eliminated. Um, it was, when did they go home? Tony Reigns went home. Episode eight. Wow. That was more than I thought. So they lasted eight episodes and I feel like episode four or five, somebody else got in a fight. Maybe Tony and Camilla were involved and TJ came to the house and was like, you guys are getting like two wasted every night. You guys are fighting too much. Like this is your last warning. Nobody's getting sent home, which he, he also gave Tony a warning the season before with Shane. Uh, but he gave the whole house a warning. And then a few episodes later, he is smashing the eggs, kicking the trash can at Camilla. Camilla's not giving one shit. She's like five foot nothing, like standing up against Tony. Um, and then I feel like TJ came the next day and was like, like yeah, you it. guys you guys are just lunatics. You're out of here. Yeah. Like he literally told them enough fucking around. And what do they do? I think they even got more drunk. <laughs> they got more drunk. They got more aggressive. They were fighting more. Um, and I mean, really, like, I don't think Tony and Camilla won any challenges that season. Um, so, I mean, you think back to Tony on Rivals 3, and, like, I my mind just goes to him yelling at Camilla on a loop. Yeah. Like it's I mean, not like it's not like any insane. They didn't win an elimination. They didn't win a challenge. It was just like they were kind of middle of the pack, like in a good spot. Honestly, like they were w- tight with bananas. They were tight with Vince. Like they could have made it far if they weren't such fucking lunatics. Absolutely. Next season we got was Invasion, which Invasion is. You hate this season, right? The, the, like, I feel like this was just like a average season. I don't think it was really good. I don't think it was really bad. Correct? I think they really butchered the champs portion of the season, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I think it ended up being an average season, but it had the potential to be a really really good season. Yeah. So coming into invasions, he really had who was his biggest his biggest ally this season. Was Bruno, mm-hmm. being from a season, and I think that was kind of it because I thought him and Sylvia were clashing, like they weren't friends. Yeah, so so I think what happens is because Invasion is a weird format because they started with the eighteen rookie or not rookies, but like people who had never won on the island, and you know they all thought that like that was the extent of the cast. And they had to book their tickets to the Oasis. And um, episode one, he beats Bruno in the elimination to yep. secure his spot in the um, in the Oasis, I think is what they called it. And then, like, everybody else kind of kept competing for their spots. Um, but I think, like, there in that season, there was very clearly a line drawn down the middle of, like, this side versus this side. And I do think episode one, I think it was, Sylvia had a vote to, like, basically side with Tony and Bruno or side with Nelson and Hunter and those guys. And she kind of screwed Tony over. So like instantly they were on opposite sides. Um, I think the guys on Tony's side were like him, uh, Corey and Dario, our boy Dario. Um, And then girls wise, I think like Nicole and maybe Kayla. So like there's very clearly two sides, um, but he beats Bruno goes to the Oasis and then, loses to Shane in the elimination, which was episode um lost to Shane episode six. Um so I mean I'll just say this overall just to give me my thoughts on his performance on invasion. 
I think least favorite season and performance out of Tony was Tony being on invasion. If you remember, he was um, he was sober this season. He came on to invasion and TJ made it a point to say like, Tony, you know, I'm really admiring, like you changed your ways and all of that. And like, he was, he was fucking boring. Like he was sober and he was not that fun to watch. He wasn't getting in fights. He wasn't hooking up. Like it really just wasn't that entertaining. Um, and so like, and then of course, like the next fucking season, he was already getting hammered again, but it's just kind of funny that like the one season where he was like, I'm going to better myself. And he made it six episodes, but like it wasn't that fun. So I think of his six full-time challenge seasons, this is my least favorite. Yeah. And I think to just add on to your point, I think the biggest thing with that season for him, you, you talked about the no alcohol and everything was that was him becoming a dad for the first time. Was that this it's season? Like, yes. That, that, that was th- that season. So it was kind of the first step of I'm growing up. Uh, so, so moving on, did, did Tony hook up with anybody this season? I, don't I feel like so. we're. I feel like are we keeping track of his hookups? Bloodlines was Christina. I don't think he was there for a second one. Rivals three. Did he hook up with anybody? Um, I don't think he did. Didn't he hook up in Rivals Three with Camilla, or when did they definitely? No, that, hooked up? that was that was Dirty Thirty. Okay, sorry for the spoilers. I'm just I'm, I feel like I feel like when we talk about Tony, it's always like, oh, he hooked up with all these girls, but now we can't think of them. I think he did. It was oh, just one boring. of them. One of them was Jessica. Rivals Three. Yes. Rivals Three, Jessica, and I think there was one. Come on, Mikey. There was one. Uh, fuck. I don't want to start going back to previous seasons here. It was definitely Jessica. Did he also hook up with? Yes, Jessica. Um, I don't know. Maybe that was it. I don't think there was anybody else on Bloodlines that he hooked up with. Was there? I don't think so. All right, so Jessica and Christina so far. Yeah. Sorry, I, I interrupted the flow. No, no, no. And then moving into Dirty 30 now, I think this was kind of the first season that Bananas took Tony under his reins. No pun intended. Okay. Right? They kind of form that well yeah because i yeah little brother vibe i agree and i think the reason why is probably because like tony's first three seasons bloodlines rivals three invasion bananas was on all of those but like tony didn't last that long and like bananas came in late for invasion so like i feel like at that point they were like friends and they had done three straight seasons together but now is kind of where they actually started playing the game together a bit more. And they both lasted very long on that season on Dirty 30. So I feel like, yes, Banana started to kind of to kind of reel him in a little bit. Correct. So talking about Dirty 30, Tony beat Darrell during an elimination. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? But Ammo beat Tony. Yes, right? you, yes, you kind of yeah. said them in, I think, the opposite direction. Because of the redemption house. Yes. Yeah, all right, if you want to explain it. So so I think Tony comes into Dirty 30. He's no longer sober six months after the last season, um, but he looks like he's in better shape. He comes on to Dirty 30, season number four, um, and he, let's see, he loses an elimination to ammo in episode four which was a a big upset i mean ammo was like if we would have been doing the podcast at the time he would have been number 25 on our power rankings out of 15 um he was terrible and tony lost to him but then like you said he's goes to the redemption house where Darrell is they're up on that little thing which is just a classic apparatus above water 
Um, I feel like they reference this a lot when people are falling off. And basically, Darrell pushed Tony off first, but the way their bodies flipped, Darrell's foot hit the water first. So that means Tony wins, and Tony goes back into the house. So we, yeah, we, like you said, we we joke a lot about how Ammo beat Tony, but then Tony beat Darrell. Um, so kind of almost a, a bad beat for Darrell, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Ammo greater than Darrell. Yeah, exactly. Transitive property. So then Tony kind of goes, he goes back to the house on Dirty 30, um, and he is there for a while. Dirty 30 was one of the first long seasons, um, and he makes it back to episode six. Am I reading this right? Or sorry, 16, I mean, yeah. And this just shows why Redemption Houses, especially that season, was just so bad. It's never a good idea to do a Redemption House, my opinion. I agree. Um, oh God, you like the Redemption House? No, no, no. I, I liked, I love the Double Cross this season. Yeah. Which I know is not what you're talking about, but um, I did kind of like how they did the start of the Redemption House, where it was just like the first three people that lose the first challenge of the season. You're gone, but you're in this house. Yeah, but then, it's then they started. Challenge. Yeah, but then they started bringing them back too much. Well, yeah, it should have what, what they should. I it, here's my opinion: the perfect redemption house is Battle of the X's too. My opinion. Oh yeah, absolutely. Where you lose and then you just face the last loser team, and it's just you just continue going. Mm-hmm. That's my double elimination style bracket, like College World Series. It's not that hard. So, uh, uh, doctor writes, but at this point, Tony had kids. Tony has kids. No, that's Corey. <laughs> Classic mix up, Mikey. Come on, man. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to see on Dirty 30, the winners of the daily. So episode, so Tony comes back and then on episode eight, Tony and Camilla, this is an important episode because Tony and Camilla both win the daily. It's like a spelling bee, I think. So it's individual. But Tony was the guy's winner. Camilla was the girl's winner. And that was Which the episode. Bananas. Like, seriously, the fact that those two clowns won. Yeah. I mean, come on. And that was the night where they go out to the bar, an actual bar. They get all liquored up. They come back on the bus. Tony and Camilla are making out on the bus. Tony has a girlfriend. They're making out on the bus. He was you know, throwing eggs in her face two seasons ago. And then later that night is when Camilla, you know, started talking to Leroy, went on her big tirade that uh, was one of the factors that, that led to her um, getting the, the death penalty. Um, but that happens episode six. And then in episode um, seven, Tony ends up going into the elimination because I feel like at that point he was just at the bottom of the bananas totem pole. And he beats Dario, our boy. He beats Dario in an elimination. Uh, last for a few more episodes. But what I'm trying to remember now is Tony beat Dario. So he's in the house still. But then episode 16, he lost some challenge that got him sent home for good. Do you remember this? Because guys-wise, the final three were Jordan... Derek and CT. Okay. And Tony and Hunter were the two guys before that. So those were the final five guys. They did a big purge right before that where like it was a redemption house challenge, I think, where bananas okay. um and maybe CT or sorry, um bananas and Leroy maybe got eliminated for good and a few other guys, but Derek or Tony was still there. And it looks like Derek beat Hunter and Tony in some sort of three-way <laughs> elimination or challenge. But I don't remember it at all. Snaking your way back in is what it was called. Yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm reading that right now, but... Can you, do you have the description? I do not. Because uh, I remember Hunter making it far. I remember Tony making it far. But I don't they remember... Were the, they were the last two eliminated before the finale. Yeah, exactly. And Derek, it looks like Derek, 
So it looks like Jordan and CT were not up for that elimination. They had done something that had made them safe for the final. So Derek had to go in against Tony and Hunter. Oh, it looks like here. It looks like I got a clip of it. Was it trivia? Oh, so I don't remember this, but look, it was something like this. Apparatus above water. Wait, have we seen that before? This is the, look at Jordan. All right, you better you better put that down before we uh, get suspended again on YouTube. <laughs> Good point. Okay, so it was a fucking apparatus above water. Derek wins, sends home Hunter, sends home Tony. Um, but I feel like at that point, you leave Dirty Thirty, and you're like, Tony is a good competitor now. Like he's gone. He his first season he got kicked off because of DQ. Second season he got kicked off because of fight. He's won a couple eliminations now. Like he's made it, you know, that fucking close to a final. Like he's become a much much better challenger. Yeah, I mean, when anytime you finish last elimination before a finale, especially when you're three seasons in, like you kind of I don't want to say earn stripes, but more than likely you get asked to come back. And I think this is kind of the time where Tony grew up and this is where leading into his next season, he showed the type of player he is. So should we just dive right into that next season? Yeah. But how many times have you said Tony's grown up? I mean, I don't think I've said it enough. I think Tony, let me go this route with you. Oh God. From first season, to last, or even if you want to count, I, I guess we can't say how he is in All-Stars 4 yet, but Final Reckoning. Has he grown up the most out of any challenge competitor of all time? From, like, starting where he was getting kicked out, I think there's, there's levels to it, like, from a childish one to, like, CT, obviously – is got to be up there. I get yeah. that. But that was more for like physical, like beating the shit out of somebody. Like, but t- Tony fought his own brother. True. I, 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 I think Tony, Tony and CT are in the same vein where it's like he, two guys. I, who, think C, I think, yeah, I think CT is higher for sure. I, I, I think that, but maybe the tier directly below that. I, I don't, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Because yeah, I, no, I feel like I, there's not that many people that are start off crazy like where they're at and where they're at at the end of their career. Even like Bananas, like he wasn't to that level or Jordan wasn't to that level or whoever. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think CT and Tony both share a common thread where like, their start was very, very crazy, like low on the spectrum, immature, fighting and all of that. And they ended up being guys who were like, I don't, I guess in, in CT's case, level-headed, but I feel like he got enough seasons to play it out. And like kind of, there was that CT era where he was like a, a much more calm down version, but you could tell he still had it in him to go off on people. I think Tony's career is a lot more condensed where like at no point in his career would I necessarily call him level headed or quiet even, but like he definitely, I feel like matured from like a, a just a temperament perspective. Absolutely. So, so Vendetta's first season, he made the finals. Yep. What is your biggest takeaway from that season? I mean, my biggest takeaway, I think, from the entire season, Tony aside, is the Tony moment where he turned his back on Bananas and voted him in. Um, So this is Tony's fifth season now. Uh, I mean, I think Vendetta's is a good season. I think it's great compared to some of the ones we've had recently. But um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think back to that episode where he sent Bananas in and I feel like that would be a good rewatch because I, I remember it as being like a thing where maybe they got caught in between episodes off the regular cadence, 
and they spent like 30, 40 minutes Tony walking around the house talking to this person, talking to that person, being like, should I pull the trigger? Should I not? Like he's taught me all of this. They're cutting to the confessionals. And then you finally get to that moment and Tony's like, yeah, I'm sending you in. And like that is – and the fact that Devin kind of finishes the job um, – just made it like a, a moment that we would never forget. I think this is by far his best season of the challenge. Apex Mountain? I think this is his Apex Mountain. This is where we truly saw the competitor side of Tony Reigns. Okay. If What season do you think his is then? No, I, I think it's probably this. You when you say that, you mean like, like kind of his his willingness and his effectiveness at like actually playing the challenge game. Yeah, I think playing the game, obviously making it to the finale, but just kind of he played. He, he this is for me his best season that he did across the board. I don't think it's close. No slip ups. I correct me if I'm wrong. This was not the season. This was not pot. Postigate was the next season. Correct. This is his like cleanest. Like, I don't think he got that drunk during the season. It was more of I grew up. <laughs> Here we go. God, <laughs> you know I'm just doing this on purpose now. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, the episode by episode thing here, and. I think to your point, I don't I don't remember him fighting on the season. I don't really remember him hooking up. Um, but if you remember, Vendetta's was the season where they did the Troika. So basically every daily had th- – every daily, regardless if it was team, individual, whatever, ended up with three people being considered the winner. Um, and it looks like – so starting episode four, Tony was in the Troika. He was in the Troika for the next two weeks. He missed it the next week. And then he was in it for the next three weeks. Mm-hmm. And then it looks like there was a gap. So out of a total of 10 challenges that had Troikas, Tony was in seven of them. So that's pretty fucking good. Yeah. Out of a cast that big, Like, Zach was in a lot of them. He had a good season. Natalie was in. Like, Brad was in. Bananas was in early. But, like, Tony was winning, and he, like, had the power a lot that season. Um, And it looks like episode uh, 10 is where he actually picked Bananas to go in. Um, This was the season where he had the mayo and the eating challenge. Um, Just, like, a a really good – performance i'm trying to see do you remember anything related to the final well i wanted to talk about the eating part okay um i believe it was the same episode as pizzagate do you remember that whole saga not to be confused with pasta gate yes pizzagate was that marie yes but i just want to write i just want to Correct me if I'm wrong. He had the bowl of mayo. Didn't he also eat like what well, it was the rotten cheese or whatever? Was that that season as well? I don't want to get it confused with. He had an eating challenge in that champs for stars as well. And he ate cheese. I think all in the all in the like the mayo part. It was like. I think he had marshmallows. I think he had cheese. And I think he had the mayo. I think he ate three different things in one, like, daily. I think you're right. Um, it was definitely it was definitely Mendetta's. I'm trying to see. Oh, it looks like he did have an eating challenge on Champs first. Yeah, I, I'm just trying not to blend those two. I, I'm forgetting. Um... Oh, I don't know. I'm reading the episode description for Food Wars. Um and it look it doesn't it doesn't specify who was eating what. The winners for that challenge were Tony, Zach, and Marie. 
but I feel like, okay. So I, I, I do kind of remember this. So at the start of this challenge, there were seven teams of three. So Tony was on a team with Zach and Marie. Yep. And I think what it was was like each round they had to nominate someone to eat things. And I feel like most teams were like kind of taking turns. Like you do this, I'll do the next round. And I think Tony kind of volunteered like, Hey, I'll keep doing this if you want me to. Yep. And so I think, I think his last thing was the Mayo, but he had been eating marshmallows. Yeah. And, and th- things. this, this was the birth of Tony time. Yes. It was, I have it now. He started off first round, six people. He had to eat a block of rotten cheese. Oh, God. In the second round, Tony beat out Leroy in a marshmallow eating contest. And then in the final round, he had to go against Kara where they had to eat the bowl of mayo. Wait, so did, did Marie and Zach not do anything? I don't think so. I think Tony went up every single time. I need to rewatch that episode. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, talk about putting the team on your back. Was it, do you remember, was it Tony or like Zach or someone else that actually coined the term Tony time? I thought it was Tony. I thought they did a confessional. And I was like, say he did like something like that. It's Tony time or something like that. Do you think do you think it was like, you know, TJ's like, all right, Kara, Tony, ready? Go. And then they cut the confessional and he's like, This he's is like my last his, round. Yeah. He's like cracking his neck. He's like, All right. At that moment I knew it was Tony time. And <laughs> it just goes right in. I think that's how it went. And so. Tony time is like it's a thing we still say today. What's age the best? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, first off, let me go this route with you. Oh, God. Tony down that bowl of mayo. Alex, gun to your head. How long do you think it would take you to eat a bowl of mayo? Like a bowl that the same bowl that he had? Yes, like that size container. and everything. It was like a it was like a Hellman's fucking container. It I was, mean, it was, a, it was a big bowl. Like I remember just seeing like all the mayo. Oh, yeah. Disgusting. Um, I mean, I feel like I mean I, I like mayo. Oh I, my god. I, I don't I don't go I don't go uh, I don't do a sandwich without it. Um so I, I don't think it would be like something that we're like, you know, several hours I'm struggling to do. Because that's the thing about these like food challenges, like if you get fucking like eyeballs, you might be there for hours. Um, but I, I feel like Mayo, his bowl of Mayo, I'd be able to do in like, I don't know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Yeah. What do you think? I, mean, I think bowl of Mayo, I think I can knock out in 20 minutes. Okay. Well, I mean, how do we know how quick Tony can we is? Just, can we just like, you remember those challenges where it's like, I can eat 10 cookies in 60 yeah. seconds. Should should we set up a day of just eating some of this crap uh, between me, you, Andy, and get Nito's too, and just like just go around and see who can do it? Like, could you imagine us? Like, we all try to do it at the same time. That uh, is, I'm kind of picturing like a like a stir the pod combine, or like a circus yes. almost. Oh, I like the stir the pod combine. <laughs> like, oh, that'd be so gross. Because I feel like with mayo, uh, I if I was doing it, like I'm sure I would pound through like the first few minutes and like be thinking I'm doing good, and then I would immediately hit a wall, probably get, like throw up a little bit of it, and then I'd be able to power through. Yeah, I just however long that takes. It's whenever you hit that wall, it could be, and I I don't know if it's three spoons worth or four or five or whatever it is, but as soon as you hit it, like. I don't think I would ever want to touch. And it might ruin mayo for the rest of my life. That's what I'm more scared about. And Tony just fucking downed it. Dog. Dog. Is he... Is he the best... I, I, I forget if we talked about this already. He's got to be the best eater of all time. So... is Does Tony have any other eating challenges? 
the champs were stars won. Okay, you're right. Where he won. But like, here's the thing. He did, you know, you see during a final, like Jay not drinking a drink or whatever, and he bails out. Tony did three different things. And he kept going. And that's that's more than some seasons even get. Like during yeah. the finale, I feel like. So like to me, like you put Tony, hey, all you gotta do is drink this. Okay. Like it's game over. Yeah. Like if there's an eating portion, like or drinking portion, he's gotta be the first person I call up. It has mm-hmm. to be. And like that that kind of like optimistically makes me think about how awesome it would be if we had, let's say four seasons from now, Tony comes out of retirement, he makes the final and like they, he arrives at a checkpoint and he's like in third place, but it's a food thing and they just do the editing and they cut to him and he's like, this is where I fucking win. This is where like I, I, I make up the deficit they cut to him. He's eating things, shoveling into his mouth. And like the thing that like, it's almost like, it's almost like, um, he's like a mythical creature when it comes to eating stuff because he's been gone for so long, but like everybody thinks about the Mayo and everybody thinks about him being such a good eater that like when he does come back, if they give him the chance to do it, it's going to be awesome. The, the true, eating king you know there's puzzle queens puzzle kings there's so many out there in the world he's one of if not the only eating king well and speaking of king on vendettas do you remember when tony had the burger King? King. there oh yes that was amazing god how many whoppers do you think he had that day at least at least seven oh my I think was it I think that that challenge let me see if I can figure it out. That challenge I think the troika was um bananas Tony and Kyle and they were talking to Devin at the time. And mm-hmm. Tony had the crown on and I think Banana said like or no it was Tony. Wasn't it Tony who said like you're talking to Johnny Bananas. That's Michael Jordan and I'm Scotty Pippen. And this right here is Dennis Rodman. And then they cut to Kyle, and he was like, he was like, he's talking about Michael Jordan. I don't know who that is. Yes, God. <laughs> Kyle, another person I would love to have back. God, may, may, make the challenge great again. I mean, that was fun. Isn't that isn't season forty? Like, it's got to be coming soon, right? I think they're leaving soon. Like, what do you mean, leave? Like leaving going to film to film yeah thank god i mean so we need to put a a flight tracker in baton rouge oh come on there's no way tony reigns is back for season 40 right we'll we'll get into the future let's finish this up final reckoning um wait wait so so tony finishes the final uh but he finishes Outside of fourth place because they cut off two guys, two girls. Yep. Um, so I think he finishes third place for the guys, fifth place overall. So like, doesn't take home any money, but he made a final. Yeah. And then final reckoning, he was in that dreaded last elimination before the finale with bananas, lost. But the scene that reminds me the most of this season was Zach saving him. Ooh, okay. With Zach just thinking he's boys with Bananas and Tony and just decides to save him and throw him and Amanda into the elimination. Mm -hmm. Crazy. So, respect for Zach. I'll give him that. But um, kind of that Bananas and Tony team, very Rivals 4-esque them being partners after uh, Tony backstabbed him. Um, what do we think? I mean, I, I think there's a lot of different ways to go here with Tony's time on Final Reckoning. Um, people forget he was not there episode one. Yeah. 
He just wasn't on the show. It was supposed that's, to be banana. That's when bananas, like he's like in the grave and nobody's there. Yes, right? <laughs> okay. yes. and they're that you know he's knocking. He clearly knows that he's not getting saved. And there's a camera in there. He's knocking like, "Come, let me out! I know I have plenty of enemies." Blah blah blah. Correct me if I'm wrong, too. Didn't somebody go home from that? And he was like, "Yes, yeah, several teams did." Well, I guess they went to the um, redemption house. Yeah. So bananas just skipped the first <laughs> daily. Yes, and I, I think maybe even the second daily. Tony wasn't even there for, and, t- and Banana was just watching on the sidelines, laughing, drinking, and then they finally bring Tony out there um, to be Banana's partner. But I think that's just like, you know, we talk about Tony, like how he he doesn't have a conventional challenge career. He's getting kicked off. He's doing this. He's doing that. This is another example of that he's not on the season to start, um, but Devin leaves, so he comes in as Banana's replacement, and. Uh, I, I kind of want to rewatch this season just to see those guys because I do feel like I feel like let me know your, I want to know your thoughts on this watching bananas and Sarah on Rivals three they start off and they're like you know not getting along there's still all this disdain toward each other and then there's a turning point where they start winning and they start acting like friends but I do feel and obviously we know bananas takes the money, but I do feel even watching it that like it did seem a little fake. Like oh, it's a hundred percent fake. But I, I I feel like on Final Reckoning, I think bananas and Tony came on. They were together. They acted like they were mad at each other, kind of like a Trev Alex fake fight for a few episodes, and then it kind of just hit a point where they were like, "We're fucking boys. Like we're we're like yeah. I don't care. Like you sent me in." You sent me in, but like I kind of taught you how to do that move. I'm still mad at you, but I know you wouldn't do it again. And like we're guys now, like, and I feel like it was genuine, much more genuine than Bananas and Sarah. Yeah, and that's like you said, that was kind of the fake rivals three. You know, it, it, it's all the same. It's like, oh, I'm upset at you. What a shame. Let's play this off for three, four episodes, and then by episode five, we're this team that's fully come together. I mean, it's all the same. Uh, and I think even Banana said it going back, and I know this isn't about him, but like when he talked about, I think, I forget what podcast he was on with Sarah, him just saying like, yeah, I was upset at Sarah episode one, but like at the end of the day, like I knew I had a really good partner and like we could win this thing now. And, you know, the whole thing with that is, he, he truly wasn't gaslighting her up the entire season because he didn't know about the twist at the end. But that's for another podcast. So, yeah. But it's, it's just classic. I mean, I love – it's it's like – it's almost like end of like a – like I feel like the end of Tony's career was like kind of the end of like a rom-com with Bananas. It was kind of like if only they won the, the finale, it was very – oh, the like at the end of – uh, vendettas it's like that last 20 minutes of that episode last 20 minutes of his career of the breakup or whatever scene like oh the the boy leaves the girl they cheat or whatever and then what happens the next they reunite they come back together so wait so, so they the, rode off the, into the sunset the coming back together is final reckoning yeah with those two yeah okay it's just kind of the end of tony's career yeah so, okay. I guess you could even ride that off into if we want to already talk about what was he chance for stars two, where I don't know if you want to give him a ring, but he did win that. He did he did win that. Um let's I let's finish off final reckoning real quick. They bananas and Tony end up winning two dailies and then they lose an elimination to Joss and Sylvia. Um and then they come back into the house they come back into the house and then uh they lose to natalie and Polly in an elimination called milk and cookies where bananas and natalie have to hold literally hold their arms up above their head as long as they can yep. i think we're on for like eight hours or something um it was the, it was the same one that i think it was in usa or whatever that bananas beat Polly in but the biggest difference with that was they were like on ice or whatever Oh, was it? 
Yeah, it was the same thing. I think bananas just had you had to keep your arm because you were holding a they because it was too long. So they changed it where you were holding like a flame. So like if I held it here closer to the ice, the ice obviously. Oh out. yeah, I remember seeing so, like, highlights. Yeah, you want to like hold it as high as possible. And it's almost like giving a toast where you're like a little higher, a little higher, a little higher. Straight vertical. Straight vertical. Yeah. Uh, so they lose the elimination. Um, Bananas and Tony, I think they didn't make the final. I think I do think when I think back to final reckoning, like. I think they were the heartbeat of that season. They were they were a fun team to watch. They hated each other and they loved each other. And then they were kind of like the odd man out of the house. Like uh, the whole alliance was going against them. The Ashleys, Amanda's of the world, um, and they kind of you know took all those bullets, lost, came back, and all of that. Um, and just like a great partnership, Bananas and Tony really were really was Batman and Robin. Can um, I ask you this with the season? Go if ahead. Bananas and Tony. I was going to ask you this. One. Sorry, not to jump ahead and steal your thunder. Would one of them steal the money? Take the money and run? So I remember we actually talked about this as the season was happening on BMFE. So I'd be curious to see if our answers match what we said at the time. I think – so Ashley ended up taking the money from Hunter. Bananas and Tony are in that final, and they win. And TJ tells them that Bananas, you won. TJ, you won. Or, or Tony, you won. I think – I think they both split it. I will say this. I think I agree with you on that. Okay. But – if Tony had more points or whatever and said, I want to take the money and run. I think that would be easily the top three greatest moments in challenge history. You think why I say that is because when you have Tony and you have bananas, and but that is bananas move, and you're literally doing that on bananas. Like, I mean, the take the money, the take the money and run was literally for bananas. Yeah. And you pull um, that move? Like, come on. So let, let's think about it. Let's. So you said you agreed. If bananas wins, you don't think he takes it from Tony. I don't think so, but like at the same time, I could see Bananas said he would have stolen from his mom. Yeah, I, I could, I could, like, I could see Bananas doing whatever. So, like, if he told me he took it, I wouldn't be surprised. But I, I don't think he would take it because I think he would play it up and he would have this. It, all, it would almost like in his mind justify taking it from Sarah even more because he would go on and say like, "I took it from Sarah because like." We legitimately didn't like each other. She did me wrong, blah, blah, blah. And for Tony, he would be like, we made up. And like, I understood why he made the decision against me and we're friends now. And so I just think he would like spin it in a way where he was like able to make his Sarah move even more powerful. And at the same time, like kind of make it so like I'm not the villain every single time. Yeah. Okay. And then if Tony won, I just don't think – I mean, it would be great TV if he did send the bananas move right back at him. I just don't know if he has that in him. Yeah. And like, obviously, he sent banana, bananas in on Vedettas. I just don't know if he's taking all that money. It would be – and Mikey the Doctor writes, if Tony took the money, it would top bananas, take the money. Absolutely. I, I don't even think it's close. Like I said, I think – it, it would be hard, you know? It's 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 hard to say. I could see, you know, does Tony have kids? Like, th does he need extra money? I th Yeah, I think he needs a couple diapers. A couple diapers? I don't, I forget if he has kids. Uh, <laughs> but, I don't know. It's tough. Chat, what do you guys think? You think he would take the money or not? Let us know. All right, you have any other questions that before I steal them from you? I don't think so. 
All right, cool, cool, cool. Last but not least, champs versus stars. Was it stars or pros? Uh, champs versus stars season two. So before we even talk about it, what is our opinions of him being on the show? Because he's not a champ. No, he's not a champ. Um, but I think the season before champs for stars one, they had um, Anissa on it. They had Jenna on it. Corey, like they had already kind of broken through people who weren't actually champs, which yeah. is annoying. But I think by the time you get to that next season, um, and you don't have champs, like you still did have like um, you did have champs. You had uh, Ashley. Wes, CT, and then I think challenger wise who weren't champs, like Devin was still interesting. Anissa's there for the food. Um, Tori's interesting. Like Kayla's fun to watch and Tony's fun to watch. So like they really, really stretch the limits um, of what a champ is. Uh, but maybe like after champs versus pros, when it was actually all champs, say like, realized like we had to beg these people to come on so like to keep this spin off up like maybe we don't you know limit it to just people who have won before yeah god it's still crazy to me he he went on champs for stars it just oh. like if you would have if you would have said to me tony reigns like season one so well his first season what what we say was um why am I blanking on his first season now? Uh, um, rivals three bloodlines. Yes. If you would have told me he would have been on, if that BME would literally say, Hey, Tony, we want you for a spinoff. I would have said, you are crazy. And the fact that he's doing seasons with freaking Arian but, Foster. But, but he did, he earned it. Yeah. Like he didn't earn the champ title, but he earned the title of like, we have a spinoff season where we're bringing on 10 people from the challenge who are our most like entertaining, good, fun to watch people that are doing the show right now. Tony was absolutely in the mix at that time. Yeah. All right. So Tony comes on to champs for stars too. Um, and I don't remember a lot of any of these spinoffs. Um, but I think to start, they drafted teams. So it was like blue team and red team. Blue team had some champs, some stars, same with the red team. And then in episode seven, they switched. And it looks like um, the leader on the scoreboard got to draft their partner to make seven different teams. And so Tony was first, and he drafted CT. So, like, right away, to get CT with the first overall draft pick doesn't even seem fair. Um, and then Tony and CT, once they split up into these teams, um, just kind of go on a little run. Um, it looks like Tony in episode three beat Shane in elimination. Um, and then when he's with CT, they... Uh, don't go into any elimination. Um, they beat Casper and Luis and Daniel, I guess it's Booby Gibson and Wes yeah. in the final. I think one thing to notice too, that um, this was the season where they also had like, uh, they were raising money for charities and going into the finale, Tony raised the most money for his charity. Did he? Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Cause he was at the first draft pick. So he had been doing pretty well. Um, I can't find much on this finale. Um, it, it looks like I remember they really did the whole team dad bod thing. So I think yeah. Tony had kind of a gut too. Um, I remember the final, and that was a picture of it. Um, it's just being like really rainy and muddy, and like one that wasn't fun to kind of think back to. I mean, look at this picture. Let me try to make this full screen. Um, like CT and Tony were just a smirky duo. There we go. Let's try. Jesus Christ. I mean, they're just legends. 
Like it was there's no shit they won. Um CT and Tony, I'm glad they won. I'm glad Tony won. Uh and I don't think we count these rings, at no. least not here on the podcast. Uh but it is kind of smirky that again to what I was saying before, like Tony doesn't have a conventional challenge career. So like to say Tony you have to kind of specify like he has a ring, but it's not a real ring, but like he did win. Um, so I think, I think it's just fun to kind of say that he did win one of the spinoffs, but he hasn't won a real season. Absolutely. And one of the last, uh, I know we kind of hinted, talked about it in the beginning, but kind of the come full circle now, kind of the last era of the real world to the challenge competitors. Yeah. So kind of an end of era before we started getting into the American idols, Britain got talent of the world, like kind of the end, which yeah. is crazy to think about. It's kind of sad. Like, and I don't know, you know, I know Alex talked about it a little bit. You know, we started watching real world a little bit later. You know, we went back, rewatched like Portland, some of the older seasons, but like it's, I think it's a shame that's, that's not back on anymore. Like I, I enjoy watching real world. Like I think it's a very interesting concept of, you know, just putting people from all over the country together in a house and what could go wrong. Um, kind of a shame, but you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, we talk about the downfall of the challenge all the time and how it's related to the cast. And like, it's not a coincidence that the real or the challenge had a steady flow of people from the real world for two decades. And then they stopped the real world and like, yeah, no shit. We have to look to other shows, other channels for like people and the people aren't going to be as good. Um, but to your point about Tony kind of being the last of the real world, like he is kind of like from a, a in-between era in terms of casting on the challenge because the season right before Tony uh, X is two is the first season that they started doing. Are you the one? So it was the first season they started like looking other places and Tony came on the next season and he's kind of in the last batch of real world people. He's coming on with, are you the one people he's coming on with, you know, like Corey and Devin and those guys. And then a few seasons later, uh, I think vendettas was really the big one where they started opening it to like UK and big yeah. brother and so big brother and uk like you start bringing in kyle you start bringing in josh fezzy all these guys that we have now and tony was kind of right in between there and like it's it's we're glad that he kind of fit in there but he was the kind of the last of one era and then sort of the beginning of another yeah uh, mike doctor was six out sorry when Mikey Dogger writes, was Corey and Ashley the last people who came from a real world show? Actually, Corey and Ashley were the season before Tony. Explosions came before Skeletons. I believe the last season. What was what was the season called? Kayla was on the last real world season. I just Yes. I'm forgetting the name of that one. It was um I think it was Go Big or Go Home. Yes, you're right. You are right. Which I think it I think that season sucked. Like I think people I, I, I remember I personally watched like the first three episodes and I stopped watching. Um and I think ratings wise that was the season where they decided like we can't keep doing the real world. Um because it was had been doing so bad in the ratings. Um so that was go big or go home, which was right after uh, explosion and skeletons. And I think that was like why, you know, Corey and, De and, and Tony and those guys stick out even more is cause like it was right when the real world started to change, but before they had completely gotten to the end of the road there. So let me go this route with you. Did Tony Reigns end the real world? He was so good on that show that nobody could top him ever again. And it just, maybe downhill yeah crazy i think so <laughs> so i guess we kind of just went through every season tony's been on i think now before we get into some segments which i don't know how many segments we have tonight is talk about the future of tony 
obviously we, we saw the trailer the other day of him on All Stars 4, which is great. But I think the question we should be asking ourselves, will we see Tony Reigns back on a normal season of the challenge? Not one of these spinoffs. Will we see it? Can we get Tony Reigns back on the challenge? I think yes. And the reason why is because I refuse to let myself live in a world where I don't think that's the case. Um, I I think he's going to come back. Like if you think about aside from like excluding this, this past season, season 39, it was fucking trash. The season before that was ride or dies. We had Darrell, we had Veronica, we had bananas who had taken a couple seasons off and come back. Like I do. And Laurel had, had taken a few seasons back. She was on that season. The season before that, um, uh, I guess double agents was two seasons before that double agents. Teresa comes back out of nowhere. Teresa comes back from like 10 years away from the show. And so I just think there's always hope for like that one semi random person who like was a good competitor in their time. Hasn't done the show in forever is very disconnected and all of that, but just comes back and like, that's one of the season storylines is like, Hey, this person was a big name. They're returning. How's it going to be? I think that's just always in play. And I think Tony is just a, a person who the challenge is probably honestly calling every single season. And he's just been saying no for a while. So I don't think the calls are going to stop. And eventually I think he's going to come. See, I lean towards more of a no that we'll, we'll never see him again. But you bring up points like Teresa. And Teresa is a great example where Tony's got kids. Teresa has kids. Like, I mean, her kids were pretty young. She married that football player. Um, you know, when the kids grow up to, you know, six, seven, eight, like, can you squeeze in a season? Yes. I think it's possible, but like, I, I lean towards more of a no, but I, I, I just think you never know. And I think Teresa is the perfect example. That was a good point. Yeah. I completely forgot she was back. Yeah. Or even like, like, um, like Kellyanne, when she did rivals three, she hadn't done the season yeah, and but I, I think it's a little different when when you like settle down with a family. It's yes, like yes, I think yeah. That's like that's the ultimate. Like, but Darrell has done that. Like, could you time. see? Yes, Darrell's kids are obviously older now too, and that's what I'm saying. Is you can you get to the point? It's like saying, could you see Zach and Jenna back on for one more season? Eventually, yeah. Really? Maybe not together. Yeah. Well, I hope not. Who's watching the kids? <laughs> Maybe they bring them on. Five person alliance. The challenge. Families. I'm still uh, waiting for it. Tony would have a pretty good squad, I feel like. If he got to bring all of his exes too. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Eating challenge. Oh god. Baby food. <laughs> Baby food. Oh, that's so gross. Um, I guess looking at All Stars 4. What are you looking forward to the most with Tony being back? How he is as a competitor, just him being back on the screen, or what's he doing with his life now? My first thought to that question was everything. But if I had to narrow it down, I think I what I'm most interested in seeing, to be honest, is like his demeanor, his the way he the way he's like invested on the spinoff. Cause what I'm thinking is I want him back on the flagship. Right. So like yeah. if I, if, if we watch him on all stars and he like is taking it seriously, not like in a try hard way, but in like a way that like the challenge is like a meaningful thing. Like if his first confessional is like, you know, I came back because like, I feel like I came on to my rookie season as a kid and I really grew up. And I got to see my mistakes and like, I wanted to, you know, revisit that part of my life. Like, that's awesome. I want to see that. Cause I think that could lead to him coming back. But if he comes back and he's kind of like, you know, this is like fun. I'm, I'm drinking a lot. I'm not hooking up. But like I'm still drinking, having a good time. And it's just like a party. I, I, I won't be that happy about it, but I want to kind of see how he approaches being on a spinoff as it, kind of relates to like him translating into being on a full season is what I would say I'm most interested in seeing. Yeah. Um, 
I, I just I just want to see him back on the screens. I love Tony so much. And I just think it was like he's like one of the good people where maybe it was towards kind of like I, I always say like Rivals 2 was like for me like the first season of the challenge where I was like, okay, I'm watching the show. But Tony was like kind of the first person where I saw the birth of him through real world. Like him, Corey, like always always have like a special place for those kind of people. Yeah. Because I, I like saw them from the birth. You know, why, you know, me and Adam always talked about Tori seeing them in Are You The One Second Chances and like, you know, things like that. Those people will always have a special place. And I can only imagine what, if I watched like real world Key West back in the day, like with Bananas or – you know, real world, whatever, with some of these other people, like Austin with Wes, like how I, I would feel towards these certain people. And it's just like, I don't know, for me, it's like one of the first people where I, I've seen like the beginning to almost the end with. Yeah. You, sense, you know? you're, you're there with him from the start. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, it, it, it's going to be awesome to see him back. And I think assuming he doesn't go home in the first couple episodes, there's going to be a moment whether he does gets in a fight or wins some awesome elimination where like where it, it happens and you're watching it and you're like, this is why I fucking miss this guy because yeah. he's doing these three things on my TV screen. He's doing it in electric way. And I, I, I don't regret ever missing him because this is what he ha always has the potential to bring. So like assuming he doesn't go home early, there's going to be a moment where that happens and we get that feeling, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Anything else before – are we doing an MVP, LVP? Do we normally? I always forget. I, yes. I think we got to do MVP, LVP. Wait, correct me if I'm wrong. Would this be the 800th MVP, LVP? <laughs> no. Or isn't there like some number you said? Technically, technically it would not be. And the reason why is because um, – uh, Mito's on his solo pod last last week with uh, Anissa. He gave his MVP LVP, and that got us close to 800, where it would have been tonight. But then he had his uh, Chat GBT bananas and West come on the pod, and they That's actually the they actually gave MVP LVP picks. There, yeah, but we don't do we don't give that. That's never tallied, right? Have we ever given guest MVP LVPs? I mean, it's the first time ever. No, McCord, McCords. Did McCords count on the list? We didn't. We didn't give. I don't think we gave them MVP LVPs. I don't think so. Oh, we had to have give M MVP LVPs when we did That's the Mount Rushmore. Oh, we did Mount Rushmore. Yeah. But... This is the first time that anybody besides the four of us have given a pick, and it's Wes and Bananas. <laughs> Yeah, but when we do phone calls, like video, that does that count or no? You no, know they, we, they, they're not giving picks. No, like when we would – like if, if I wasn't on the podcast and I sent a video of an MVP LVP, did that count or not? Yes, if it's part of the episode, yes. Jesus Christ. So we missed out. We gave it to a chat GBT. It's kind of smirk. God. I mean it's only 800. We'll have a party for 1,000. God. All right, all right. So, MVP, LVP, let's get the order, uh, and we'll go from there. So, yeah. Trev, while, while we wait, wait for Mikey the doctor to give us an order, I mean, I think we got to address the elephant of the room here. Dot, the dot, clip, dot. the clip that we tweeted out. Oh, yes, great point, great point. Alex tweeted um, – Should I play it? What? Should I play it? Yeah, play the clip. You can okay. play it. This was from how many years ago? I'm looking at the my apartment. It was from Ride or Dies. So that was – I got to see the clip again. I'll tell you by the cabinets. Second to last clip. season. Didn't want to bring up that because I was trying to slide – Tony I'm at my too. MVP for tonight <laughs> and try to keep it on the low. But since the elephant of the room has been addressed, I mean, Tony Reigns, can we please get him back on the challenge? Uh, I've heard some whisperings. I, and I don't know. Alex likes to search the dark web. But is Tony Reigns 
in on this new season of All Stars? There's no way. He's not officially Bach. <laughs> so I haven't seen the full cost list, but I and I don't know when they're leaving. I think they might have already left. I don't know if the season started. I don't know any of that shit, but I do know Tony's name has been linked to being on All Stars Four. I mean, if he's Bach, I mean like literally. That was on us. We got not it. Just, not, not, not just on us. If he is back on that season, I think we have to recap it. I think we have to recap it. But we'll we'll do it in a respectful way where it's like episodes one through three, maybe. <laughs> not every and I think I think the second Tony, if he gets eliminated, we're done. We <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. So if he's eliminated episode one, we're done. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> and the elimination, Tony goes home. And we just end the stream. And we're like, all right, see you guys next season. <laughs> We'll wrap it up. See you guys. If you want anything else during the office, yeah. let me know, you know. Bye bye. I mean. So. I've always said. I'm a man of my word. I think we have to give a, a recap every episode. Until I, he's gone. Until he's gone. I, I agree. I think the question is, is how. How we do it? What do you mean? We so set up restream. We sit in front of no, the no, no. What, so I think the whole reason we said we're going to recap All Stars Four is because of Tony, right? Correct. If he's on the season, and he is, um, and so like All Stars Four on Paramount is not like a live thing. That it's like dropped at like midnight. I think past seasons has been like Thursday night, maybe Wednesday night. Um, and so do we want to say that it's like something where, you know, episode one drops, obviously Tony is on that episode and, you know, we figure out the sir the pro sir the pod board figures out like a good time, basically before the next episode starts to record. And then we put out the pod and then kind of keep doing that. So like maybe one week we record on Thursday, the next week we record on Tuesday, whatever. Um, and then, the second Tony is gone, we're just done. Or we record that episode and then we're done after that. What do you think? I think here's my opinion. I think we play it by year of when we record what day. Yes. We'll do episode by episode until he's gone. The episode he's eliminated, we stop. If it's the finale that this doesn't, you know, if he's gone episode one, we don't recap it until the last episode. So I, I want to end the season is what I'm getting at. So let's say let's say he goes home episode one. Okay. We recap episode one, and then we don't come back until the finale. And then, but then in the finale, are we talking about like things that don't have to do with Tony? Because he hasn't been on in eleven weeks. I think yes. I but then we're talking about the season that's not related to Tony. But Tony's in the season, so we can finesse it whatever direction we want. I you know, think I, I actually like that. Adam Mitos fills in for the rest of the season if Tony's gone. I do like that. Or like during the finale episode, the season recap, every time we're talking about Tony, we speak and then okay, guys, we're stepping away. Adam can finish up these episodes. Oh, there was a redemption house. We're back. Hey, you know, like kind of like stuff like that. Well, do you think? Like, let's say Tony makes it to episode four. So yeah, yeah. episode one happens. It's a good episode. But do you think we make our episode recap, like, Tony-centric? And we make it kind of like a shorter 20, 30-minute episode where it's just like, all right, the cast comes in. Here's what Tony said. Here's the daily. Here's how Tony did. Here's how he placed. Here's what Tony did in the voting. Here's what he did in elimination. And just kind of like time we time like, it. Yes, yeah, so like like not like we're not gonna ignore, you know, let's say Darrell beats some other guy. Like we're not gonna ignore that. We're gonna talk about it, but like keep it all kind of like act like we're Tony's biggest fans, which we are, and like make the episode kind of centered around him. I think we do that to an extent, but we still talk about Yes, I agree. I, I think it's I think it's like if we're it's a normal season with bananas on it. 
where we talk more about him like tonight and highlight Tony more, but we still talk about this. Well, we're like, you're, we're like, we are live coming here with Tony's second episode of all stars. Yeah. Four. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm fine with that. And I think, I think we recap it until he goes home and we give him a big farewell when that happens. And then we stop. I think we stop unless we are all so locked in impressed by the season locked in on the season the chat's loving it and we're just like let's ride this out and like we're glad we did it for tony and like you know we're not saying we're gonna do that but like if the season brings us in that much like we might as well at that it's fair because the season the all-star seasons are shorter um like maybe 12 episodes ish yeah like if tony goes home episode seven maybe we're like you know, we expected to stop at this point, but like, you know, these two people have a big rivalry. We're rooting for this person in the final. So like, let's just ride these vibes out. So who knows? That's what I think we kind of approach it with. Yeah. I'm, I'm game for that. I, I, I say whatever the fans want, I'm happy to do it. I mean, I, okay. like I said, you have me on footage saying I'm, I'm willing to recap every episode Tony's on. So I'm let's say it. this. I think we still have our, our season award show for season 39. There might not be any more off-season pods between then and April 10th, I think, is when All-Stars 4 starts. Yeah. So that's a Wednesday. I don't know if that's going to be Wednesday late at night or what. But basically, we will get our – we're not going to do a preview show for that, I don't think. So I think we get our Episode 1 recap in before April 17th. Okay. I think that's fair. That's fair. Sounds good. I guess now we go back. MVP, LVP, Todd. MVP, LVP. Um, I'll go MVP. I'm glad I got this. I'm just going to go Tony. Oh, come on. <laughs> Legend. Can That's I say... literally why we're here. Can I say... I think so. No, I'm not going to do it. My MVP... Is Mayo. Okay. I think it's the best moment that Tony's given us on camera and one of the reasons why we want to see him back every season. I could say food, but I think Mayo's just classic. Mayo's so, more uh, iconic. Yes. So Mayo is my MVP. Great pick. My LVP for Tony is kids. Wow. And I'm going kids because – Like Tony's I'm, kids or just kids? I'll do Tony's kids specifically. Okay. Tony's kids – sorry, I'm not for the kids. I get that. I'm not for the kids because I think that is the number one reason why he's not doing more seasons. Okay. And I would love to have him back, you know, pumping out seasons left and right. Um, just a shame. I, I, I just – good for the family. I love him to death. Big family guy. But for our for my sake, I wish he was back every season. Okay. That's okay. a good pick. <laughs> That's a good pick. Um, my LVP for the Legends Tour, Tony, I'm going to go – I'm going to go Milk and Cookies because Ooh. Milk and Cookies was the elimination that Bananas and, and Tony lost where – they don't lose that. They're in the final. I think they have a really good shot at winning. I think Tony has a really good shot at being a champ. They don't steal the money from each other. Everybody's happy. They ride off into the sunset. Maybe he does a few more seasons. Um, but like milk and cookies, because not only because it prevented them from winning, but like that was also literally the last time we've ever seen him on the challenge. So I'm going milk and cookies for my LVP. Yeah, good pick. I, I actually really enjoy that pick. Any other thoughts before we wrap tonight up? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I think this is this has been fun. We we talk about Tony all the time on our five year anniversary. One of our recurring bits that we mentioned specifically was, "Can we get Tony back?" We've been asking that question for years. We finally got kind of an answer to it with All Stars Four. Um, 
So we'll be back in some capacity for that and just praying that, that we can get him back for a real season. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the last thing that I want to address, um, and this is non Tony news. I do want everybody to say a prayer tonight uh, to Nelly T. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw by any chance, uh, but yesterday he went through uh, a surgery. He had to amputate his leg. Um, you know, such a shame to see, you know, one of my favorite challenge competitors of all time. I saw Corey posting stuff yesterday. looked like it was the, the surgery. Haven't, I haven't seen any news on how it went. Just everybody, please say something tonight for Nelly T again, one of Sir the pots favorite competitors of all time, scuba Nelly. Um, you know, it, it's just one of those things. So, yep. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Peace and peace. Anything else? Uh, no, just w- one real quick last thing. Um, Legend Tour, we've done Bananas, Wes, Kenny, Jordan. Adam did um, Anissa last week, and that kind of broke a few barriers. Um, but that was a punishment. So, like, that is not something that we usually choose. This is the first one where we chose where it was someone who isn't a champion, doesn't have the resumes that a Jordan or Bananas has, and, like, it's for good reason. It's because Tony does a million other things that are really fun. Um, so who knows? Maybe Legends Tour going forward will get a little more flexible, but I think to break kind of that barrier, you have to be somewhat as electric as Tony. So Absolutely. I'm excited for the next Legends Tour. Maybe it'll be a champ. Maybe it'll be someone else. But um, for him to kind of break that wall it just shows how awesome he was on the show. The impact that he has on us. He really grew up. He really fucking grew up. We'll end on that. Well, thank you guys for listening to a brand new Stir the Pod podcast show. I'm your host, Trevor. You can follow us on Twitter at Stir the Pod. You can follow us on Instagram at Stir underscore the underscore pod. Thank you, guys. Love you guys. Shout out, Duffy. (gasps) Bye-bye.